Hello ladies and gentlemen, Devin from Decon here, and this is the VivoBook Flip. This is a 2-in-1 convertible from ASUS and is a mid-tier consumer-friendly option. Since this is a convertible, it's able to switch between your traditional laptop, tent mode, and tablet mode. The VivoBook has an aluminum chassis and the top of the laptop has a great feel to it as it is a smooth aluminum. Along the front edge is this plastic attachment which aids in opening the lid, but sadly it requires two hands to open it. Looking along the left edge, we have a security slot, two USB 2.0 ports, a lovely SD card slot, and lastly we have a volume rocker and a power button as well. Along the opposite side we have our proprietary charging port, an HDMI port, a USB 3.0 port, a USB Type-C port, and our good friend the headphone jack. Thankfully the HDMI port supports 4K output, and the USB Type-C is a first generation port which means transfer speeds are going to be capped at 5 gigs, and it doesn't allow for external GPU support. And disappointingly enough, the USB Type-C port on the VivoBook doesn't allow for charging, which is the first for a laptop I've tested thus far. The top case is constructed from plastic and has a brushed aluminum design, and is heavily textured. A full-size keyboard is included and is even backlit. The backlight leaks around the edges of the keys and isn't flexible as it only has 3 options of adjustment. The keys have low travel and are a bit on the mushy side for my taste, but overall they provide a nice typing experience as they are quiet and the layout is normal which should minimize any errors. The trackpad is subpar as it is using ASUS drivers and not Windows Precision drivers, and in my experience it was a bit on the floaty side and at times drifting was an issue. Structurally it's a bit hollow and just doesn't feel satisfying to click. In the corner of the trackpad we have a fingerprint sensor which allows for sign in via Windows Hello. The fingerprint sensor works great, but I would much rather have seen an infrared sensor built into the web camera for Windows Hello instead. Speaking of the web camera, let's talk about that. And let's do it quickly because it's pretty atrocious. It's a 480p web camera, and in a well-lit room, it's below average. And in a poorly lit room, it's abysmal. The only thing it has going for it is the placement which is at the top of the screen, which is where a web camera should be. And this is due to the overall ratio of the frame to the LCD screen. ASUS calls this their Nano Edge display, and while this isn't nearly as bezel-less as Dell's Infinity Edge display, it's close, and allows for proper placement of the web camera. The screen is a large chin with an obnoxiously large branding. I would have much rather seen promotion of their product line in this space rather than a second ASUS logo, but that is purely an aesthetic complaint. The hinge is constructed from metal and is the best I have seen. It is extremely firm and allows for roughly 350 degrees of rotation. The screen is a 14 inch LED touchscreen and has a resolution of 1920 by 1080. The screen has great sRGB color accuracy while NTSC and Adobe RGB are average, but in real world use it looks great and this is showcased while watching movies in tent mode. Viewing angles are some of the best I have seen on a laptop, but the awful glossy coating ruins the experience as it is a glare magnet. In terms of audio, the speakers are located on the bottom of the laptop, and ASUS utilizes Sonic Master technology to decode the audio. This placement actually works well in tent mode as they essentially become front firing speakers. They have no low end to speak of, and the mids and highs are average, but they do get plenty loud as they reach a max of around 72 decibels. The main draw of this laptop is its ability to become a tablet, and more specifically a device capable of drawing or note taking. A pen is included in the box, and it's very nice. There is no lag and its sensitivity to pressure is above average as it can detect pressures from 10 grams all the way up to 300 grams. Now I'm not much of an artist whatsoever and I usually use these devices more for note taking rather than drawing, but using this pen provided a pleasant experience. The pen isn't as responsive as a surface pen as there were times where I would begin to draw something only having to double back and attempt my stroke again, as it was not registered. Palm rejection is really good as well, but there were rare instances where the screen would grab or the sidebar would be activated by my palm. The bottom of the laptop is aluminum and has some flex to it. A rubber foot is in each corner and these three large vents in the middle here are our intake vents, while the exhaust is up near the hinge. To access the internals, 11 screws need to be removed, as does the top case, which is held down by clips and ribbon cables. Once removed, we can see the internals. Near the center and on the underside of the motherboard, we have our processor. It is an 8th generation Intel i5-8520U processor, and is a quad-core processor. Like other 8th generation processors, the processing power is out of this world good and a major step up from previous generation. Intel 620 graphics is also built in which provides a capable gaming experience with lower demanding titles, but this does tend to stress the laptop a bit, as the fans kick on full blast. Adjacent to the CPU is 8GB of RAM, which unfortunately is soldered onto the motherboard, and next to the RAM and on the underside is our solid state drive. Just below that we have an empty 2.5 inch hard drive slot which is fully upgradable. 
Lastly, we have our battery, which is a 3-cell 42-watt-hour battery. During general use, such as word processing, internet browsing, or drawing, I was only able to achieve 5 hours and 10 minutes with maximum brightness, and 8 hours and 34 minutes with minimum brightness. While only strictly watching Netflix, I was able to achieve 6 hours and 6 minutes at maximum brightness, and 6 hours and 57 minutes on minimum brightness. So who's this laptop for? I wouldn't recommend it for any professional use considering the graphics is Intel based only and there's no way around that with the USB Type-C being a first generation port. I don't think I'd recommend this for artists either considering this device has some limitations that a Surface Pro or an iPad Pro doesn't have and I'd recommend those for that use instead. Overall, this is a great 2-in-1 option for students as the 8th generation Intel chips should provide more than enough power for general use. And the ability to annotate and take notes is fantastic. Also, the screen and the ability to go in tent mode would be great to have in a dorm room type setting. I would recommend getting a wireless mouse to go with it though as the trackpad isn't great. Well, that's going to wrap up this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please send me your likes. If you enjoy my content, send me your subs. And as always, thank you for stopping by. I'll see you next time.